Hurricane Lee is now a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, so you went to bed last night, you probably slept through the rapid intensification, and now we have a monster storm on our hands. Yeah, and all of this is because of the wind, so they have really picked up. At this shower yesterday, this was a Cat 1, and right now it is a Cat 5 that has max winds of 165 miles per hour. Yeah, this morning has been going through an eye wall replacement cycle, which is a normal thing for large, mature, dangerous hurricanes. Kind of like a, a snake shedding its skin. It's a restructuring of that eye wall. And when those thunderstorms really come back, you end up with a stronger storm system. And so this is a natural part of that cycling that we see with hurricanes. Hurricane hunters are actually in the storm right now. So we've been watching the data. Their first pass of that eye wall this morning had winds at 150 miles per hour. So these punches through the core that the hurricane hunters are doing, you know, it's giving us a really good idea of the structure of the hurricane, but also that direct raw data of how strong the winds are. The good news is this is not going to be a direct hit for the Caribbean islands. And Jason, you know, it was just in 2019 that Dorian decimated the Bahamas. Uh, so having a Cat 5, again, looming off in the Atlantic, it's wonderful news to be able to, to wake up and know that this is not going to be a direct hit for them. But we will see fringe impacts. We're talking about outer rain bands, uh, dangerous beach conditions. Past that, you know, we don't really know exactly the impacts for the East Coast, which yeah. is a struggle, but we're talking about something that's going to be happening next week. Uh, we have to see some of the data come in and really see how the atmosphere is working this weekend to have a better idea of what this means for the East Coast. Yeah, a lot of hub hub, as I like to call it here on social media, about what impacts uh, is this going to have here. I think the bottom line with this is we're still at least a week away from seeing any major impacts here in the United States. All of this is going to be highly dependent on what happens to a trough that is going to be developing somewhere either in the southern plains or in the southeast. If that trough ends up developing farther west over in Texas as well as Oklahoma, we could end up seeing Lee get closer to the United States, particularly north of North Carolina here. And that's why some of the models have been saying, especially in the Massachusetts area, we could be getting clipped here. Now, if this trough ends up developing a bit more uh, eastward here, that would end up being some good news for the East Coast because that means that we will likely end up seeing Lee travel further out to sea here. We're just going to have to wait and see. I think Britta Sunday is when we're going to have the best chance at seeing what's going to happen uh, uh, towards the end of next mm -hmm. week. And even, you know, scenario number two, which is obviously what we're hoping for, uh, we want this to stay offshore, we're still going to have impacts for the East Coast. Guaranteed, we are talking about large surf. This is a Cat 5, so the swell, the energy from that storm in the water is going to be reaching the East Coast. And so we're going to get battered by waves. Beach erosion is a big concern as long as coastal flooding. And, you know, for folks that live along the East Coast, we're going to have looky-loos, people that go out and look at these large waves, and you have to make sure that you are giving respect to the ocean and giving plenty of room there. But hopefully that's the extent of what we deal with because this is going to be a huge storm. In fact, the potential here is that it could be top five for the Atlantic Basin. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.